Hi gang, Scott here. Skylum announced Luminar AI Update 3, and uh, among its features is quite a bit of improvement to Sky Replacement, you know, Sky AI, the Sky AI tool. And I I've got a separate video that talks about Update 3 as a whole, you know, all the different things that have changed in it. But I wanted to make this particular video just about the Sky Replacement because, uh, it, you know, it really, Update 3, if you're a Sky Replacement user and you use that tool in Luminar often, you'll notice these changes. And I thought the best way to look at them, not just here's a few new sliders, but let's look at a few examples of a sky replacement on a photo from update two versus update three and what's changed. So I'm gonna walk you through a few examples of that, kind of point out here's what update two did that was kind of like, hmm, I'm not sure about, and then here's in update three where things look a little better. Uh, in some cases, look a lot better. And then I'll show you the sliders again at the end. So let's have a look here. Right, so this replacement, this sky replacement, this is done in Luminar AI update two. And you know, overall, it looks pretty good. This is a, a pretty uh, straightforward reflection to manage for Luminar AI. The sky was certainly pretty easy, not too much intricate masking there. Uh, let me show you now what it looks like in update three. Okay, I didn't quite get the sky position exactly the same, but I want you to pay attention to underneath the bridge. Update two, it's quite aggressive on the water reflection under the bridge, it's very bright. Update three, it's a little more in line, it's toned down. And uh, also notice there's not as many bright white clouds above in the center. Well, um, that's uh, kind of good. That's not as strong on the reflection. Update two, now pay attention to the reflection of you know, Ponte Vecchio, especially on the lower left side. It's bright, especially like in between these two uh, orange colored pillars. There's a, a whitish colored one with green windows. Update three, that's been toned down. So the, the bridge, the natural bridge reflection is there. And it, it's, it, it to me, the, the update three default rendering is a little better. Now, if you like that brighter look, well, the cool thing is we have plenty of tools in Luminar AI to go and do things. We've got Dodge and Burn. We've got the light tool. We have other things. We can mask. We have local masking tools. So we could, if you're like, oh, well, the, the, the bridge, I, I kind of liked what it looked like when it was a little bit brighter, you know, when I'm seeing them side by side. Okay, you've got some options there. But um, I, I found that the, the default coming out from Update 3 was a little more natural, a little more believable. And this is one example, right? This one example, maybe it's a, you know, it's a pretty, pretty tame, pretty tame difference. So let's have a look at a second example. Yeah, another one I'll put in the, the relatively tame category. So here's update two. This was otherwise a clear blue sky day and not even a particularly vibrant blue. Dropped in this sky in Luminar AI 2, looking all right. Cool, great. Um, now let's look at update three. Big change you'll notice is in the water. Update two, update three. You now two is brighter. Uh, the relighting is not exactly great. There's a, there's you know as you pay attention, there's quite a bit of differential in the brightness that's in the ocean. A lot of spectral highlights because this was taken on a clear blue sky day, so there's a lot of sun out there. When I do the relighting, I should tame that down. Well, in update three, I think it's gotten better. It's a little more tame. Once again, if we feel like, ah, oh, you know, I, I, maybe uh, the, the foreground feels a little bit too dark now. Well, there's sliders in the Sky AI tool, right? We've got the relighting controls. We can play with that. And we have plenty of other tools to you know, burn, I sorry, burn, dodge, to, uh, to raise up that, uh, that foreground. But one more time, update two, Update three, and I think out of the shoot, update three, it's a little tamer. Uh, it's, it's still a little more uh, matching with what would be, you know, clouds and cutting down some of that that bright light. So, uh, those, so those are two um, 
pretty straightforward ones. I, I want to show you a third one now. This one, uh, this is not the best choice for a sky replacement photo, but I chose it for a reason. It's to show you how the relighting has improved. So this scene here, relatively overcast day, pretty empty sky. I dropped in this you know, orange afternoon, late afternoon sunset kind of sky. The sun's still kind of high in the sky, right? It's up above the, uh, the hill in the background. And the relighting is okay. It, it added a decent amount of warmth. Uh, but now let me look at update three. Pay attention in particular to the reflections in the water. Update two. Update three. That's more realistic. If I have that kind of an orange sky, I should expect to see that kind of an orange tint in my water reflection, especially in the areas, this is update two, that are bright white or, you know, really almost kind of washed out. Update three. What you're seeing, when you look at update two again, what we're seeing in those water reflections, it's kind of the color of the real sky, the one that was in the photo I captured, not reflecting the sky I've dropped in. Update three, it's improved that relighting for us. Here's another scene where the improvements in color rendition in the reflections are quite obvious with update three. So this is an update two image here. This is the update two sky replacement dropping in this galaxy here. And then we move to update three. Notice the richer, bluer tones in the water. That definitely matches the richer, bluer your night sky that is in the replacement sky, right? Update two, update three. It's much more believable. It's just a better out of box experience. All right now, I want to show you one more example where kind of a lot of things come together where there's just a, overall the scene is so much more natural looking and believable right from the beginning, right, you know, right, right from the, right the word go. Let's have a look. To give you the full rundown on this one, I want to show you, here's the original photo. So, you know, very blue sky, afternoon, you can kind of tell that the, the sun is starting to fade off into the distance there because it's pretty, pretty washed out at the, at the horizon line. Here's update two. Dropped in a more pleasing end of day sky, oranges, bits of hints of purple. But look at the foreground. It's still very, very blue, quite bright. Yes, the reflections itself are pretty good, right? They, they, they match pretty well. The object detection was good, but the coloring is off. Then there's also this weird spot in the center where I'm not sure what the AI saw or didn't see there, but that coloring is just wrong. And now update three. The relighting is so much better. That amber turning to purple, it's more shadowed in the foreground. It just matches everything else. The trees take on that lighting as well. The, that weird artifacting in the center of the photo, that's all gone. You know, so a lot of this stuff is just all happening under the hood, these improvements that have been made to the replacement engine. So if you're into sky replacement, you're going to notice some of these improvements in update three. Uh, let's open up this last photo here and I'll run down the slider changes that have happened so you can see the, you know, the, the, the difference in the interface and how some of these, uh, these tools interact and work together. First, a real quick rundown of the slider changes. Sky orientation and horizon position. These two, uh, yeah, this, this used to be kind of a conglomerate of sliders. It's been broken out now. Sky orientation, we have the vertical, right? We can raise and lower. Notice the physics are better, right? If I raise the sky position, well, then the reflection gets lowered. That's making more natural sense for the vertical. Return that to where it was. Uh, horizontal position, that is the same. We shift to the left or the right. They had gotten the reflection stuff correct there. Horizon blending, that hasn't changed. Uh, you can see if I zero that out, we'll see some relighting changes. I'll undo that. Actually, if I raise vertical position just for a second, you can see there's that there's that horizon line and there's that horizon blending. Uh, speaking of which, while well, I keep that up there, 
this is a good place to see shift. The shift slider now takes that position and moves it up and down, right? Whereas vertical kind of did that in its own way, but we, we have that, we have it, we have it separated now. So we can kind of position things where we want them and then shift versus the sweeping, like, you know, changing perspective that we would get with vertical position, we can just raise and lower with shift. Now let me undo all those little tweaks there to get back to where we were at the beginning. For this scene in particular, what came in handy. Uh, I say mask refinement, no changes. Certainly push things up so I can get the tree line looking good. Scene relighting. The relighting engine has just gotten better. And so the relighting strength, like the defaults for this, oops, let's make sure I got that to default. This would be the defaults. But pushing the relight strength and the relight saturation up higher in this particular scene it really helped to blend in these these purples and these oranges in with the foreground more so with update 3 pay attention to those relighting sliders don't just take the defaults if something doesn't look correct I mean the AI is going to do a, a good job of getting a mask looking good and it's going to do some basic relighting is it going to be perfect every time no, that's where you come in, the photographer, to go and tweak and fine-tune things. You pay attention to the details, right? You notice that that sun was setting over behind these trees here. Uh, you know, I really ought to probably re reposition that. If I think about that, right? What's going on here? Let's move that vertical position up for a second. That's where that sun is? Well, if you remember my original photo, the uh, sun's kind of setting maybe out here. Maybe. This is realm of possibility. But I could shift it over here, more likely, and then bring this back down to zero. And my lighting overall on the scene would be a little more believable. Because I'm not sticking this sunset over on this side of the photo. If I put the sunset over on the left side of the photo, it makes no sense at all. How would the trees be getting any light? The, 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 this side of the photo would be getting the brightness. You need to pay attention to that as the photographer. Pay attention to your lighting. Pay attention to those details. And then let the AI do the heavy lifting of the masking and some of the relighting. But back to relighting here. You know, play with these, these settings. Take saturation and poke it around and see what happens. I do notice that as I push saturation farther, uh, it tends to get things a little darker. And for some photos, that's okay. Uh, for this one, I felt it was pretty good in, uh, in the, the mid-grade uh, area here, around 45, as it turned out to be. The one other slider that's changed is uh, the water blur. Collapse some of these down here, see so a little more screen real estate. I did not use that on this photo, but to show you what it does, as I push water blur, you'll see softness be added to the water, but only really to the reflection areas. So you do need to be careful with this, right? Notice that pushing the water blur a little far. I'm starting to see some, some haloing around the edges here. If I back that off some, that's getting toned down. In this particular scene, I just don't need the extra blur on the water. But the point being, the blur is added to where the reflection is being detected. So water blur is with respect to reflection. Last but not least, sky adjustments, all of these remain the same. Uh, warmth is a potential to go along with scene relighting, depending on what you need to do. You, know, you can add a little more warmth into the scene, and this will affect a, a lot of things, right? You're, you're kind of, you know, all of these, these bits and pieces add up together. And, you know, maybe a little warmth. You know, it's one of those, every time I go in and look at a photo, I see something different, maybe I tweak it. Each one can be a little unique. But for your relighting and your coloring, really pay attention to these sliders here, warmth, and in general, the baseline that update three is providing is stronger than update two, but it's never going to be 
perfect out of the shoot. I shouldn't say never. You never say never. Most of the time, you, the photographer, need to go in and tweak things. So you know, when you're doing your sky replacement, pay attention to the lighting sources, pay attention to the details, and then match your sky replacement to align with that and make that natural good smooth looking composite and let the AI do the heavier lifting of finding objects and making masks and uh, helping you with your recoloring. Uh, I hope you found the video useful. I hope you see that there are some good improvements in update three and sky replacement. Got questions? Go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.